School for Children with the Stigmata. Episode 13, Locked In, Part 2. How did you get here, Katrina? On a private plane, then in a car. That's not what I mean. (laughs) Oh, don't tell me you think you're the only person in the world who can track down the whereabouts of a total stranger and then drive to their house to terrorise them. I didn't mean to terrorise anyone. Okay, Jesus Christ, you are not listening to me. I'm not asking how did you get to Florence's house. I'm asking how you got here. To the interdimensional lock-in. I walked through the portal, obviously. Apparently, the two of you co-created what may be the most literal manifestation of childhood trauma ever, and opened a vortex that only stigmatists can see. It's visible for at least 20 kilometres, but no one we passed even seemed to notice. Which seems sort of sadly appropriate, come to think of it. Please stop talking. Who is we? Love what you've done with Florence's place. Very practical if she wants to start a basketball league. Marjorie, what are you doing here? This whole trip was actually her idea. You see, I was going to let both of you rot. Rot? But Marjorie rightly convinced me that St. Mary's girls stick together. Now what did you do to Florence? Nothing. I, I swear. Well, you must have done something because this type of thing doesn't just happen, Inez. I I just needed to know. You needed to know what? Where'd that ball come from? The sound... Timothy. He's here. Timothy! Timothy, wait! Is she seriously chasing after him? He can't hear you, Inez! Wait, can he hear us? I don't know. Inez? Inez, stop! We have to go after her. Why? You know it won't help. We can't change anything. Timothy, are you here? Timothy, shit. Where did you go? This is Inez, and I'm alone again. And since I'm still recording, I suppose I should tell you that I'm walking down a very long hallway in what... I think, is Florence's St. Mary's School, which is nothing at all like the one I went to. This place is more like, uh, more like a school you'd see in a dream or a movie. All white cinder block walls, speckled gray tile flooring, and blue lockers. But it's, it's tinged with yellow. Ugh, it's claustrophobic. I don't really know how to describe it. I'm not even sure what I'm seeing exists. All the doors I tried were locked, but this one opens to an office or a reception area. The lights are off, but there's a desk and an old phone. I see a bell hanging on the wall. It's about 1.30 a.m. on the night of the St. Mary's lock-in, which means we're getting close to the time the girls plan to meet Timothy in the chapel. I'm hearing the sound of a TV somewhere in the building. It sounds like it should be close by, but now that I'm out of the office, the hallway is an infinite Kusama-like space, almost like it's surrounded on all sides by mirrors. There's so many doors, but they're all closed, and they're marked with symbols, but not numbers. I don't know what any of it means. I'm just getting really disoriented, so I'm just going to keep following the sound of the TV, I guess. It seems like it's coming from the left down another hallway. It's really dark down here. A lot darker than where I came from. There's only one fluorescent light above me and it's flickering on and off like a strobe. It's almost like this whole place is meant to give me a massive headache. The doors are all still closed, but hey, at least they're numbered now. Just past room 213. It's locked. Room 211. At least I'm headed in the right direction. I think they said they were going to room 201. Room 209. Locked. 
Room 207, 205, 203, all locked. And unsurprisingly, 201 is unlocked. I'm, um, I'm pressing my ear up to the door. They're here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Trina, Marjorie. No response. They can't hear me. They're not even moving. Uh, hello? <laughs> <laughs> I want to slam this door and run screaming out of this fucking school. But against my better judgment, I'm walking into room 201. And the girls, who I can only assume are teenage Katrina and Marjorie, are sitting at plastic wooden desks facing the TV. And you could probably hear the audio. But the video is just an endless loop of a little boy drawing stick figures on a green chalkboard while some disgusting man in hideous glasses watches him do it. The light from the screen is creating these long, unnatural shadows, like the ones at Florence's house. It makes the girls look like porcelain dolls frozen in the same pose. Their heads are tilted back with their mouths wide open like they're laughing at a really funny joke their hands are gripping the edges of their desks for dear life. Their knuckles are white. Their smiles are horrible. Um, they're breathing, but it's very, very shallow. There's also a woman here, the one that I saw at the edge of the woods, um, Sister Mary Colette. She's sitting at a big wooden desk. She seems so small, like smaller than you'd think, and prettier too. She has an almost kind face. Looks like she may have fallen asleep while they were watching the movie. Like the girls, she's breathing, but not moving. No, 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 fuck! Fuck, they're standing up! It's time. I'm following the girls out into the hallway, and they're moving quickly, but they're walking almost like they don't have knees or elbows. Did you miss this, Amanda? <gasps> Jesus, Katrina! You scared me! <laughs> Good. Where did you come from? What are you talking about? We followed you here. That's not possible. I've been alone for... I don't know how long I've been alone. Um, the recorder says at least five minutes. We ran out of the gym together, remember? I was literally right behind you when you took off after Timothy. Did you find him? What? No! I... When I left the gym, I was in a hallway, alone by the way, and then I followed the sound of a TV here in room 201, where I found Sister Mary Collette and the girls. They're right here. What the hell? She's losing it. You said you saw them. Sorry. Saw us. Here, Inez? Yes. All of you. We need to get to the chapel. You're right. It's the next place Florence will go, so it's probably our only shot to get out of here in one piece. How are we going to do that? I was just planning to shake her until she snaps out of it. Not helpful. How do you know? We might all just be trapped in another one of her visions. Maybe, if she wakes up, it'll close this portal. Marjorie, what is your plan? I don't have one yet. So we're just going into this blind? We weren't supposed to be going into it at all! This is your fault, Inez! You're just lucky we showed up in time to save you both. Can you please stop yelling at me for one second? We're wasting time! I am not yelling! She's right, Katrina. We need to think. How much time do we have, Inez? Not much. The only thing I can think of to get out of this mess is to relive, or maybe try to fix what we've done. Katrina, obviously some version of us is here, reliving this horrible night over and over and over again. If we stop it, 
Or make it right somehow? You know we can't do that, Marjorie. Katrina. What's done is done. And frankly, I think it was for the best. We don't know what would have happened to us if he'd lived. So you did kill him then? Well, technically... Don't say anything. She's still recording this. I don't care anymore. There is no body, Marjorie. No birth or death certificate. No school papers. No record at all of this Timothy. For all intents and purposes, he never even existed. You don't think I checked after we talked about it? Oh my god. You killed him! Fine! Yes! Of course I did! I had to! For all of our sakes! No, she's lying. She didn't do it. What? We did. Marjorie. It was both of us. I was there too. But I was the one with the knife. I didn't even plan to use it the way I did. That's why I never told you about it. And then when I saw it, I didn't even try to stop you. It wasn't your responsibility to stop me. What could you have even done? It's my fault. I know it is. And I know it wasn't my responsibility, but I I still hate myself for it. For all of it. And sometimes I hate you for it, too. I'm sorry that you were even there. Knowing what I know now, I never would have. It was supposed to be a last resort. I don't know what to say. Then don't say anything. Shit. I'm bleeding. I'm fucking bleeding. I'm sorry, Marjorie. I'm so, so sorry. I can't talk about this right now. (sighs) Follow me. We're going to Catherine House. And what happens once we're there? I honestly can't even imagine. Why did you do it? At the time, I was protecting us. Or at least that's what I always believed. We're here. Let's get this over with. Where are they? Are we early? My phone died when we came through the vortex. It has to be close to two. Are we seriously arriving early for a reenactment of our own history? Shh! Do you hear that? Get down, now! Between the pews, they're coming. Are we seriously arriving early for our chat with Timothy? You know I prefer to be fashionably late. Of course I know that. But Sister Mary Colette was finally fast asleep, and I didn't want to risk waking her up. Besides, with the movie only halfway through, I thought the sound would give us some cover. Well, aren't you a sly fox? I learned from the best. Besides, I really don't want to get caught, so let's make this quick, okay? Okay, okay. You look nervous. Why do you look nervous? I'm not nervous. What is there to be nervous about? Because for all your big talk of new library couches, you're still a little bit scared of Sister Mary Colette? God, no. I've had more intense beatings from my kindergarten teacher. Wait a second. What? I see what's going on here. You do? You have a crush on Timothy, too. Ew, Marjorie. Ooh, Did you fall in love with his dreamy eyes? Or did you just want to run your hands through his wavy hair? What is that cold saying you use in this backwards little country? Gag me with a spoon. No one here says that. (laughs) And yet, the sentiment remains. Oh, come on. You can tell me if you do. No judgment. Contrary to popular belief, you're human, Kit Kat. You're allowed to feel what you feel. What if... I don't feel anything at all. This is heartbreaking. You're telling me. Shh. Do you hear that? Shit. Ooh, I bet it's your boyfriend. Quit 
it, Marjorie? He'll be here any second. I thought they could hear us. Oh, me too. What the fuck? Hi, Katrina. Hi, Marjorie. Florence! We weren't expecting to see you tonight. You look different. Is everything okay? What are you doing in the chapel? We could ask you the same thing. Sister Mary Collette told us you were quite unwell. Yeah, we should get you back to the infirmary. We'll walk you up. No, no, no. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to them. Who? Them. The women hiding in the pews like rats. You don't see them. You can see us? Of course I can see you. Florence, I think we need to find Sister Mary Collette. Let me just take your arm and- Don't touch me. Where is he? Am I too late? Is he dead? What is she talking about? I have no idea. Florence, Timothy hasn't arrived yet. It's still too early. Why should I believe anything you say, Inez? Because she has no reason to lie. And even if she did, just look around. Does this look like a crime scene to you? Who the fuck is Inez? Florence, we all just want to get out of here and go home. That won't be possible right now. We need to leave. No one goes anywhere until I know he's safe. Is that understood? Who? Timothy? Why wouldn't Timothy be safe? Oh, that's right. You don't know yet. Ask Katrina what's in her boot. No. I bet it's a knife. Katrina? I'm sorry. What the hell were you planning? It doesn't matter. Give it to me. Here, take it. Do you hear that? Is that fire? She can't control this anymore. Stop talking about me like I'm not here. We're sorry. We didn't mean to. Now, please, let us go. Not yet. He's here. Right on time. Timothy? She dropped the- I got it. Timothy? I didn't think I'd ever get the chance to- (laughs) Me neither. Is it getting warm in here? Yeah, it's really hot. Inez, what are you doing? Hi, Timothy. It's been a long time. Wait, you know him? Oh, yes. We go way back. What? How? I think I need to sit. Girls? What the hell, Inez? They'll be okay. This won't take long. Florence, remember how the first time we spoke, I mentioned that every St. Mary's school had not just a boy, but a Timothy. Yes. It looks like they had even more in common than we thought. (laughs) What's so funny? I thought maybe there would be variations. But surprise, surprise, it's the same fucking guy. Timothy, is this true? (laughs) He doesn't talk. What? You don't remember? He never says anything. He just exists, and because you're so isolated and lonely, you end up pushing your fantasies and imagined conversations into the space he leaves just by being nothing. (laughs) Oh my god. She's right. So what, he's some kind of cipher? Not entirely. No. No, that doesn't make any sense. I I remember it. I remember- What do you remember? We- I- Anything at all. Timothy and I- had something special. You didn't have anything with him, Florence. You never had enough time. 
He wasn't there long enough, and honestly, you should be grateful. Is anyone else getting really hot? Ignore the heat. It isn't real. None of this is. Then what the hell are we still doing here? Florence, we need to go. You need to close whatever this is so we can go home. Not yet. There are some things we remember that are real. Aren't there, Timothy? Some things that happened to the loneliest girl? Things that are done to the loneliest girl without her even knowing until it is too late. (laughs) What are you talking about? Stop, please. Just stop. I'll stop when I'm done. Please. Timothy, where is my daughter? (laughs) You can tell me. I'll just lean in and you can whisper it in my ear. (laughs) Thanks, old friend. That's all I needed to hear. (gasps) No! What are you doing? Inez, stop! You're killing him! Ah! Please! Timothy? Why would you do this, Inez? Why? I can explain. I loved him! He didn't love you back. That doesn't mean he had to die. Don't you get it? He didn't die. He just... didn't get the chance to do to you what he did to me. You had protection. I mean, she didn't know it then, but Katrina did the right thing. Even Sister Mary Colette might have been- But then why didn't you tell me? Why did you put me through this? Because I had to see him to be sure. The only way to do that was to see if I could find someone with visions powerful enough to let us go back. That's why I started the Facebook group. To find someone who could help. But why me? Your visions were the strongest from what I could tell. I think it's because you wanted to know, maybe more than know. Share the truth. Isn't that why you started the podcast? Yes, but don't you think I would have helped you find your daughter if you'd asked? I don't know. I couldn't take the risk. You used me. Yeah, I did. And I would do it again in a heartbeat for even the chance to find my kid. Okay, that's enough, Inez. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Now you tell me. Florence! Where are you going? Should we go after her? No. Let's give her some privacy. Hello. This is Inez again. Florence is still walking around the perimeter of the property. I think Marjorie and Katrina are going to try to convince her to come back so we can get on the road. We can't stay here anymore. The risk of being tracked is too high, and besides, the inside of the house is charred beyond recognition. It looks like an atomic bomb went off in here. Shadows of Florence's hand-me-down furnitures are burned into the wood paneling. All the creepy paintings are now just empty frames. The whole place is just... I had been tasked by Marjorie with packing up whatever I could salvage, which I think serves as a dual purpose to keep me as far away from Florence as possible for the time being. I imagine she needs her space, but there's also not much left to take. I was able to find her laptop, which seems okay, and the scratchy blanket, also weirdly survived. Looks like the things she loved were protected from the blast. I'm trying not to read too hopefully into that, in light of my, Katrina, and Marjorie's survival, but maybe I should. I don't know. I sort of wonder if she knows how powerful she is. Everything else she needs, well, we'll just buy on the road. 
Knowing Katrina, she'll have Florence in head-to-toe Burberry or something before we even cross state lines. Turning off the recorder for a bit. I'll turn it back on when we get closer to wherever it is we're going. Hi, yes. My name is Katrina, and I'm calling to make a reservation for an extended stay. (laughs) Yes, yes. I am well aware we're in the middle of a pandemic. Which tells me that you probably have lots of rooms to let, so would it be possible to rent the whole hotel? We have a traveller with us who's very leery of the whole COVID thing. No, I'm absolutely serious. How much would you need to hold it? Wonderful. I can wire a deposit now. Done. You're in receipt? Brilliant. Can we get contactless key pickup? And room service? And absolute privacy and discretion. Oh, and can we use the pool? I know it's closed, but since we'll have the whole place to ourselves. (laughs) Wonderful. See you soon. Starting route to Christmas Cactus Hotel. How are you feeling today, Florence? Compared to what? Oh, two days ago, when we got stuck in a time warp and found out your high school boyfriend was probably a demon who impregnated your stalker, we killed him and then blew up your house. I guess better than that. The Frosé helps. Good. And we're sure no one is going to track us here? Not if Katrina's trust fund has anything to say about it. (laughs) You laugh, but she never actually gets to go anywhere and spend it. I think she's enjoying the opportunity to throw some cash around. You've been friends all these years, huh? St. Mary's girls need to stick together. I'm sorry that I didn't include you before all of this. It was wrong. To be fair, I was really standoffish because you killed my boyfriend. But now that everyone I know has killed my boyfriend, it's kind of hard to be mad. We're cool now. I'm sorry he wasn't who you thought he was. Me too. My times with him were some of my few happy memories. We are going to make lots more of them. Speaking of... Are you guys getting in? Because the pool is so much fun. I didn't know it was possible to have so much fun in a hotel pool, but I am. This is what people do. And I am people now. Where's Inez? She's at the bar getting another round. One more frosé for Florence? Coming right up. We're going to try to find her kid, aren't we? That's the plan. I didn't even know there were St. Nicholas schools for children who were immaculately conceived. We didn't know about the other St. Mary's either. I wonder what else is out there. I literally ordered one of everything, so they'll need to bring it out on a tray. God, I love to travel with rich people. Rich people. Woo. I like this side of her. (laughs) Me too. And this place is just perfect. So much color. Oi, Florence! (laughs) I've been meaning to ask you a question. Katrina is cockney when she's drunk? I don't think she's been drunk before, so maybe she's just trying it out. Oh yeah? What is it? How do you find all those actors that sound like us for the podcast? I want to meet the girl who plays me so that I can hire her to take calls from my awful Aunt Lucinda, who's always calling me unmarriageable. I have cash. Want to see it? No, no, I believe you. It's just... So you'll text me her contact info then? I would, but I I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't hire actors. Wait, seriously? Spooky. No, no actors, only me. I just retold the stories. Glad the narration was so engrossing. Florence, have you ever listened back to any of the episodes? God, no. I hate the sound of my voice. You need to hear this. Sister Mary Collette? Yes, Katrina? Didn't people think Padre Pio was a fake? 
that he used acid to burn his own hands to make the wound seem real. They did. But what did Pope John Paul II have to say about that? That the wounds were real. That he was a real saint. What the fuck? So then, can I hire you to talk to my Aunt Lucinda, or... Were you recording your memories in the vortex this whole time? You'd have to be, right? I don't know. I always just remember sitting at my kitchen table. Some drinks for you ladies? Yes! More drinks! She means yes, thank you. You can put them right here on the table. Are you girls enjoying your stay? Absolutely. This place is great. Good. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Is there anything else I can get for you? No, I think we're all set. All right. I'll be back to check on you later. Well, that waitress seems rather familiar. She does, doesn't she? I was waiting for her to come over here and beat me with a ruler. That happened to you a lot, didn't it? I've been told I have a sassy mouth. It's probably time to tell a therapist about that. Where would I even begin? Wait. We know her. Is that Sister Mary Colette? My, how you girls have grown. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this season of St. Mary's School for Children with the Stigmata. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss a single episode. If you'd like to support this podcast so that we can make our second season, please click the support link in the show notes. To learn more about this and all our projects, visit our website, newgirlpictures.com. St. Mary's School for Children with the Stigmata was created and written by Samantha Mocker. It was produced and directed by Laura Hunter Drago. The role of Florence was played by Laura Hunter Drago. The role of Inez was played by Lexington Vanderberg. The role of Katrina was played by Emma Alicia Gould. The role of Marjorie was played by Bianca Nequanta. And the role of Sister Mary Collette was played by Ginger T. Rex. Stay tuned for season two coming this fall.